All right, hey everybody. Uh, today we're going to be walking through setting up our M-Track 2X2 series audio interface for the first time. I'll be using the 2X2M uh, in this example. All right, so next step, what we're going to do is we're going to go get Cubase now. So we'll look at the next card that comes with your 2x2, and we'll follow the instructions. And uh, basically, this card will come with an authorization code uh, uh, or an access code down at the bottom on yours. Uh, and it tells us to go to steinberg.net slash get Cubase LE. So let's go do that right now. Brings us here, and now it says create account and get Cubase LE8 now, so we'll click on that. I do not have an account, so we're going to create one. So now that we'll create an account, enter your email address, then create a password. Uh, ensure that you accept their privacy policy, choose create my Steinberg account. And there we go. We've sent you a link. So go to your email and find the email that they sent to you. And here it is. It says, Dear Steinberg customer, thank you. You have successfully created an account. Uh, click on that to activate it. And now we got to just log in. All right, so the next step is, uh, remember we have an access code, so we have to click on this to enter the download access code. And press continue. All right, and so this now you can download your uh, Cubase LE8 for Windows or Mac. Again, the installation procedure is basically going to be the, uh, be the same for Windows or a Mac uh, operating system. And in this case, I'm running Windows, so let's begin this Windows download. Uh, it's kind of large. It's about 2.6 gigabytes for Windows, 2.4 for Mac. So it might take a little while to download, depending on upon your internet speed. Uh, we'll pick up again as soon as this download completes. Okay, now that we have Cubase downloaded, we're going to open it up. It'll open uh, up just like this, and you double-click on this file, LE8. Go right in here. This is a zip file, so uh, you might see a, a weird message or something like that, depending on if you have a uh, any specific zip file openers, like I have WinZip on here. Um, but in Windows, there is a built-in unzipping element to the operating system, so you may not see anything at all. Uh, next, we'll double-click on Cubase LE AI Elements 8 for Windows and choose the setup file. Double-click it to begin uh, to run the installation. You'll notice that this may pop up, and this is basically just unzipping the files, getting it ready for installation. Once the unzipping process finishes, the installation will begin. Okay, so now the uh, wizard will open up and basically just follow the steps to install Cubase LE8. Uh, in this case, press next. Ch accept the terms of the license agreement and press next. I'm going to install the 64-bit version because I have Windows 64-bit. I'll choose next. This is basically telling me uh, what is about to be installed. You'll notice I have a number of things already installed on here. That's because I had a previous version of Cubase installed. Um, but you will also notice that I do not have Cubase LE Elements 8 installed. Um, so that's what's happening right now. Uh, so we'll leave that as it is. This is the location right here where we'll be installing uh, Cubase LE 2. So you might want to note that in case you need to access it later on. Uh, and we will press next. Finally, this is just to review what's about to be installed. You choose install and let the installation begin. All right, now that that's finished, uh, we'll choose finish. And Cubase LE is now installed. 
Uh, this message might pop up. You can simply press cancel. You can close this. I'm going to minimize uh, our internet browser and you'll notice that we now have a Cubase LEAI Elements 8 64-bit icon on the desktop. 32-bit uh, obviously if you have a 32-bit operating system. Uh, at this point what we're going to do is we will uh, move over to the M-Track 2X2 uh, in this case the 2X2M and we'll connect it to the computer um, and we will also connect a microphone to it uh, and we'll record something just to show it in action. So let's slide over here and just off camera I'm going to be connecting this USB to the computer and you'll notice back here it's already connected to the back of the 2X2M. Next step is I have a an XLR cable which is connected to our M audio microphone here that I'm connect to the back of it uh, of the uh, which I'm going to connect to the back of the 2X2M. All right, so now we have our uh, M Audio Vocal Studio microphone connected up to the M Track 2X2M. We also have our M Audio M50 headphones connected to the headphone port on the M Track 2X2M. Uh, this is what your studio looks like, right? Nice and neat cables. Anyways. I have the M Audio Vocal Studio microphone XLR connection connected to uh, input one on the 2X2M. I have the game about halfway. We're just going to start with that. We'll check out some levels in a minute or two. Uh, and notice that I have the uh, USB direct knob sort of centered uh, for the moment. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we open up Cubase. Okay, so the next step is to open up Cubase LE. So we can record into it. And you'll notice this is activate Cubase LE. When we were online uh, at Steinberg.net, we entered an access code. And once that was completed, they sent us another email with an activation code so that we can activate it locally on our computer. Uh, so I'm going to click activate Cubase LE. I'm going to access my email here. And I believe it's this one. Here it is right there. And I'm going to copy this code that they sent to my email and bring it into Cubase. Right there. Press activate license. While that's happening, I'm going to minimize that. All right, now that the license activation has been activated successfully, we choose finish license activation. And we try and open it again. All right, so you might see this window pop up. Um, if you do, that's perfectly fine. Just press OK. You can move past it because we're going to change the interface in one moment uh, to the 2x2. You notice it's right here, but I want to show you how to do it inside the actual Cubase software. All right, so basically we want to open up Cubase. Uh, and now that we're in here, we're going to choose Devices device setup we're going to scroll down to VST audio system and we are going to choose the M audio M track 2x2 or 2x2 M ASIO driver I'll choose switch you can press OK and we should be good to go so now we're going to create a new track so I'm going to right click in this area right here choose add audio track in this case I'm going to choose a mono track because I only have one uh, you'll notice I only have one XLR coming into input one and so I'm like I said I'm going to choose the mono track if I uh, if I wanted a stereo track or two uh, two microphones for example coming into input one and input two simultaneously you can choose a stereo track or you can create two different mono tracks and have one channel go into one track and the other channel go into the other track. So we're going to add the track like that. And uh, as I was just mentioning, actually over here in the inspector on the left hand side, uh, you can choose whether it's the left or the right input for that particular track. In this case, I'm going to choose the left input, which corresponds to input one on the M track 2x2. 
uh, if I were to create another audio track and I wanted it to uh, record from whatever I have connected to input to, I would simply choose write. So there we go. And a uh, couple of things about this. So first, before we actually begin recording, um, the microphone that I have requires a uh, phantom power. So I'm on the front of the 2, 2X2M is a 48 volt phantom power switch. So I switched it over. I added phantom power. I can come back over here into Cubase. I can click on this monitor knob in here and we'll be able to view the incoming audio signal. Uh, that's just to prove that the signal is actually coming in. So if I came over and I spoke closer to that microphone, you'll notice that it starts to move as I get closer to it. And actually, that's one of the th that's one of the reasons why we have this uh, gain knob right here. We can adjust the input gain of the actual microphone by do by just increasing this, and you'll notice that that will increase accordingly. Depends upon the placement of the microphone and the placement of the uh, incoming audio signal is where you want to set this gain knob. Typically, you want it to land between uh, you know negative 12 to negative 6 dB or so. Um, you also be able to see. The input level showing up over here as long as it's above that negative 20 mark somewhere in that negative 6 area maybe a little bit lower that's where you want to be basically in most cases um, the USB direct knob I want to talk about that a little bit as well if we have it all the way over to the direct side we're gonna hear everything that's going into the 2x2m and basically being transferred into Cubase um, but we will not hear anything that's playing back from Cubase. So if you want to monitor yourself as you're being recorded, I recommend moving it all the way over to the direct side. You can hear yourself with zero delay, zero latency. However, if you want to hear what you're uh, inputting, if you want to hear what you're recording, what you're speaking into the microphone or sending a signal in with the instrument in real time, but you also want to play uh, something back from the computer so that you can play simultaneously and record over it I recommend probably setting it about halfway that way you can hear both what's coming back from the computer as well as what you're inputting into Cubase and in any case you do not need to use this monitor knob over in Cubase uh, with this sort of knob here uh, built into the 2x2m at this point, you'll notice that this is uh, red. That basically just means that it's read that the track is record enabled. And if you want to begin recording, you can press the record button. Uh, turns red, and you'll notice the signal is coming in. Uh, and that's about it. You're good to go. One other thing I wanted to point out was if we put a uh, an instrument into channel one, you notice there's an input on the front of the M track 2x2M uh, for channel one as well as an XLR input in the rear of the M track 2x2M. The front instrument input takes priority. So if we have something connected to the instrument input on track one on channel one as well as the XLR input on channel one, the instrument channel on the front will take priority and be recorded while the one while whatever is connected XLR to the rear of channel one will not be. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. And until next time, thanks for watching.